Last night I created a video about an incident that happened to a good friend of mine. She was bitten by her own dog who was a child that she adopted from uh, my organization a couple of years ago. So if you want to check that video out, it was the one that I posted just last night. Now I got a really good question submitted to me on Instagram by someone who follows me and they were very curious about what my response would have been had that been my dog and that meant my dog had growled at me if I had petted him. So I, I really thought that was a great question and what he was concerned about um, in, in the question was whether when she petted the dog and then he growled and then she walked away, if that taught the dog that all he had to do was growl at her and then she would retreat. And I, that's a totally valid concept and I, actually there's a lot of truth to that. The, but here's what I want you to take into account that wasn't, wasn't explained in the first video. First of all, um, since the dog was stressed out and had chosen as his form of conflict resolution to go into this bedroom to be alone, he didn't go into the bedroom to be petted. He went in there because that's as much as he could tolerate at the time. He's only been in this new home for a couple of months. Um, for most of you that, that know Chows, they're a very independent, kind of stoic, um, a little bit standoffish breed, even with their, their own people. And so that's the route that he had taken. He could have gone into a different um, form of conflict resolution and done uh, a multitude of other things as opposed to what he did, but actually that was the passive route that he took, was to go into the bedroom. Now, had he been my dog, I would have never gone into the bedroom in the first place. I would have left him alone because I would have known that that was his way of resolving the stress that he was feeling. So the incident wouldn't have happened. So that's the first thing you need to look at. The second thing that you need to look at is the fact that he was actually pushed into the behavior. So he was actually pushed into a defensive mode because had he been left alone, it wouldn't have happened in the first place. So I, I always tell people never to give unearned defection in the first place, but to go in and actually, what I, what I, let me backtrack a little bit. What I think that my friend did was she actually started to forget the fact that she's dealing with a different species, which is something that happens when you become complacent. When a dog has some behavior issues, you get some tools and techniques and some knowledge about how to resolve them, and then things seem to be going well, and you start you know, dropping some of those techniques that you knew were working in the first place. Very, very, very common. Complacency is very common. So what happened was she felt bad about the fact that he was um, kind of staying away from the family that he'd t chosen to, to go into that bedroom. And so she started to ad ad adopt a human way of looking at things, kind of like maybe I should go in there and talk to him a little bit, pet him and encourage him to come out and be with the family, right? Well, that doesn't work with dogs. He had already chosen that that was the way he was gonna go. So by going in there, she actually set him up inadvertently to fail. So I want you guys to understand that because then you'll understand why one of the reasons why I would have never uh, uh, suggested to her that she correct the growl, okay? The third thing is that she is not a savvy dog owner, especially with a powerful breed. She's a huge dog lover. She's drawn to this breed, that, and we had multiple conversations when she first got him about how she was going to have to be careful that she didn't slip back into the, some of her old ways of being with her previous chow, and she was completely committed to doing it, but as we all know, sometimes we can't you know, we don't, we can't always follow through things. You know, we, we end up doing things a little bit differently. And as, as a result, this incident happened, at least that was partly to blame for the incident. Um, so for her to have corrected the growl when it, was, when it was actually his way of saying, I'm not comfortable with this, would have been a disaster because that could have actually pushed him into a deeper form of defense, meaning that he could have bitten her right then and there. So I'm never going to suggest to a dog owner who isn't that savvy with powerful breeds to, to do any kind of correction in the first place. But the primary thing is that the dog would have never growled in the first place had he been left alone. That's the most important thing to understand. You will always see me wrapping up almost every video by saying we could have understood this entire situation had we looked at it from the dog's perspective. Not from our eyes, but from the dog's perspective. So just keep that in mind, okay? Um, Fortunately, my friend um, and, and this Chow's owner is a wonderful person. Her husband's amazing. They are both really committed to him. Things are going to go better. Things are going to, to work out, but it's really important that we, we look back. And of course, our vision is always 20-20 when we're looking back, right? But you know, you can't correct a dog for something that you've inadvertently pushed him into. That's really important.